Hello and welcome to the channel. I'm Ominous and today I will review the live album slash debut album by the punk rock band MC5. I thought that MC5 was a rap group or something like you know kind of like too unlimited or something because MC5 kick out the jams. It sounds like something 80s but this thing comes out of the golden age of music which is the 60s. So this thing comes out, uh, came out in 1969, which is arguably the greatest year in music ever. Abbey Road, Tommy, uh, fuck's sake, probably more records, I don't fucking know, I can't really think at the moment. Uh, in the Court of the Crim Crimson King by King Crimson, oh fuck's sake, like I have to look at... But it doesn't really matter because you know this record although i don't mind it it's just it just didn't do it for me honestly you know it's just a pretty typical punk rock record i believe the record starts starts out with uh one of the band members saying oh are you ready you know kind of like a spongebob team or something but you know worse it is just kind of cliche honestly it is just you know uh incoherent it is a live album, but I don't get it why, you know, it's their, you know, their fucking, their magnum opus. Oh, I never debut album. What? What? They have two debut albums. What the fuck? Okay. It's High Time is the second studio album and third overall. What? What the fuck? So even Wikipedia doesn't know what it is. Oh my god. Yeah, so... Uh, they basically made Kick Out The Jams and another debut record and that was kind of it probably, so there you go. Uh, another huge fan of this band. Yeah, they you know came out in the peak of music I suppose then they made Back in the USA which was their debut and then High Time which was their second third album you know their final album so there we go the album cover is also really weird you know there's this stoned out face like it's really distracting and it you know doesn't look pretty but you know MC5 went with it and you know it's there so there you go there's an American flag on there, you know, the other band members are playing, so do with that what you will. I'm not a huge fan of that too, but it is there, so there you go. It's on the label Elektra, it's produced by Jack Holzman and Bruce Botnick, who, who might be uh, two of the band members. Uh, nope, they aren't. Of, of course a punk band doesn't produce their own record, I mean, come on now. Uh, we have the first, you know, there are 8 tracks on there, uh, it's 39 minutes and 52 seconds, so roughly 40 minutes. We have the first track, which is Ramblin' Rose, uh, this track is just kind of a fuck all, honestly. It, it is just like, like, the first two minutes are literally him talking, I'm pretty sure, Fred Birch, which, oh, that's not a good name, if you know what I mean, that's not a good name, Fred Birch, fuck's sake, mate. Um, I'm not, I'm not even sure who he, who he is though, fuck's sake, I'm not even sure. Um, yeah, but they start off with this track, it's literally just the lead singer, go, Rob Tyner, he literally goes on about two minutes of the song, like half of the song he talks and the other half you have some really mediocre, you know, some really mediocre guitar playing, really mediocre uh, song, so, you know, it is a cool... You know, it is a cool sounding track, Rambling Rose, it sounds pretty cool, but it's literally a guy rambling and then the second side is, you know, the Rose side, I suppose, but, you know, I don't really hear it, so there, there you go. Um, yeah, so we have the second track, which is Kick Out The Jams, uh, 2 minutes and 52 seconds. This, this is pretty much the most popular track by this band, I didn't really mind it, it is just kind of mundane. Uh, yeah, the band is just constantly shouting, kick out the jam, you know, they're just shouting the title track. They're just trying so hard to create an anthem, and I just, just don't get it, honestly. 
Uh, then we have Come Together, which, you know, I will instantly shame this song for reminding me of a better song by a way better band, so, you know, fuck this song. Then we have Rocket Reducer, number 62, Rama Lama, Fa Fa Fa. This title, what is this fucking title, mate? It's 5 minutes and 41 seconds long. And yeah, the second side of this album is really like stretching the length of this record. Uh, it is kind of like a fiery track, I didn't mind honestly, but you know, nothing of this album really minded me that much, so you know, that's pretty much my whole opinion on the record, so there you go. It is an interesting closure, but it just kind of fucks it all up with Rama Lama Fa Fa Fa. Like Rocket Reducer number 62, that sounds cool, and then you have that, that you know, between brackets line and it just fucks it all up, honestly. Then we have the opening song of side two, which is Borderline, and this song is Borderline Mediocre. Um, it just didn't really do anything for me. It just sounds really mundane, it sounds really boring to me, it didn't really do anything to propel the song. It is an okay opener, it is the shortest track of the record, you know, indicating that they're a punk band. But even for that mentality, a lot of these songs on here are, re are really long, so there you go. And then we have Motor City is Burning. This is a neat track, I, I suppose. It's six minutes long, the longest track so far. It is a neat track, but it just goes on for so long. It's, you know, the first side is kind of cool, but the second side just, you know, it overstays as welcome. It's, you know, they are in the city. The motor city is burning. We get it, guys. You like the motor motorcycle and go to the city. I get that, you know, but it doesn't have to be six minutes long. Like if this track was three minutes long, I would have been perfectly fine with it. But now it's just kind of like, eh. And after this time, I, you know, I really lost interest in this album. So I want you right now, you know, I, I don't re even remember it. Colin Fletcher and Larry Page wrote it, who, you know, like if I look at the names of the writers, like Sunra, Fletcher, Al L. Smith, they are not in the band. They are outside writers. So literally no one wrote it for this fucking record right here. All tracks written by MC5, Rob Tyner, Wayne Kramer, Fred Sonic, oh, oh my god, uh, Smith, Michael Davis. Uh, or Fred Sonic Smith, Michael Davis, and Dennis Thompson, except as noted. And literally, like, uh, the last couple of tracks are not even written by the whole band, so what the fuck? And the first track isn't even wrote by the band, like, what the fuck? How, how can you create a record like this? Like, fuck's sake, man. There's so many outside writers on this track. You know, even in 1969, people couldn't write their own shit. So fuck's sake, mate. Uh, yeah, so this track, it's pretty much a sellout track, you know. It doesn't really do anything. It's just, you know, a pop sellout track in a way. It's not, you know, not per se sellout, but it's just kind of like, you know, it's co it's uh, written by somebody else. It's lazy. It's just forgettable, in my opinion. And then we have Starship, which is the epic closure of the record, 8 minutes and 50 seconds. Um, I don't really mind the song, honestly. You know, I'm really 50-50 on this whole record because Starship, it is a neat idea. The title is cool. The track has a, a right length for an epic closing track. So I don't really mind that. It's just that, you know, fucking MC5 was never a band. That was about the fucking epics, you know, the, the closing tracks, the, the progressive suites. They were never like that. They were just kind of like a punky band that were a bit more advanced, I would say, but not much more. So, you know, punk never really did it for me, if you know me. So there you go. Uh, yeah, Starship, you know, it, it is probably the best track on this record, but with the whole record i'm kind of like nothing is my favorite and nothing is my least favorite so this record is really 50 50 for me so that's why i'm gonna give it a 5 out of 10 because you know i'm just so in the middle about this all it's not terrible but it's not great too so that's my opinion about the record let me know what you think about it in the comments down below uh i've been i hope you've enjoyed this video let me know uh what do you think about mc5 and about kick out the gems let me know in the comments
what, what do you think about it? I do listen to this uh, kick out and jams track, you know, not as in the official, but I listen to it as a rage track. I do love the Renegades cover, but that's about it, honestly. Hope you've enjoyed this video, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.